Hello everybody, welcome back to another new and noteworthy mod review. Today we're going to take a look at a pair of mods. One is going to require the other. That is the Production Revamp Framework mod and the Production Revamp Productions mod. Now it should be noted that Production Revamp Productions also has a required mod with respect to needing the Production for Palettes mod. That is linked on the Giants Mod Hub. And if you download the Production Revamp Productions mod from within the download or within the in-game downloadable content menu, then it is going to download that other mod as well. But before that, this video is brought to you by all of the Farm Barons and all of the Farm Kings. Thank you for being members of the channel. Approximately a week and a half ago, I completely mixed up the credits when I was doing the mid-month update. And as a result, I have completely lost track of who I have and have not given credit to. So we are going to be giving credit to everyone for the remainder of the month. And then in June, we'll do a much better effort in keeping track. Now let's talk a little bit about where we can find these mods and who they are available for. So the production framework or production revamp framework mod is going to be available over at the Giants Mod Hub or the in-game downloadable content menu. And it's going to be available for PC only because it is a script. It is actually multiple scripts, but scripts are not allowed on console. So it is going to be a PC based mod only. Production Revamp Productions is a mod that uses Production Revamp framework. So therefore it is also going to be available for PC players. And it is once again available over at the Giants Mod Hub or the in-game downloadable content menu. Now, what does Production Revamp, the framework mod, do? Well, it builds upon the standard base game production elements in adding a bit more complexity, at the same time adding a great bit of flexibility to how modders can create mods using this framework to potentially create some really interesting con contoctions or contraptions as far as production goes. And it fixes a few little idiosyncrasies with respect to how production works within the base game now when you are maybe doing contracts. So let's talk a little bit about the production framework. So the production framework mod is going to do several things. And I've got a little bit of notes up here, so I've tabbed over to look at those. But basically, the functions are going to be this. It allows you to create recipes with multiple input groups so you can have some very very complex recipes by making input groups and we're going to see that throughout this video when we start talking about the production revamp productions mods themselves also allows the, the ability to combine several productions into one production line that previously had to be done in separate separate productions and we're going to see an example of that when we talk about the line production, the ability to add one or more optional booster inputs to increase output. So if you add product A to your mix, you could potentially get a bonus. You could get additional output as a result of, but that product isn't necessarily required for the production of the product line. The possibility to remove a booster for specific things. So you can kind of mix and max how things work the ability to show if sorry additional display to show if shared throughput capacity in production chains is active or not so within the base game there is the concept of running production in parallel and then there's the concept of running production in serial or in shared mode if you run production in parallel then you can run multiple production lines in the same facility without losing output. If production is serial or shared, then think of it as kind of a timeshare. So I run my line, you run your line. While your line's running, I'm not producing. While I'm running, you're not producing, but it's the same facility. That is within the game right now, but the fact is, it's not really exposed to the player as to which production operates in parallel, which production operates in serial. So the production revamp framework will expose that to you for production mods that use this framework in the future. 
Production set our mission targets can no longer overfill, and this is a big one. So let's talk about this one. Right now, if you are running a contract, and yeah, I know that there is a mod out here that, that takes care of this one specific problem, but at any rate, let's talk about this. If you are running a contract that, say, delivers wheat to the flour mill, and it's a big field, well, it's possible that when you put enough grain in the flour mill, it will have reached capacity and won't accept anymore. What this framework mod does is it recognizes when a production facility is being used for a contract, and when that is happening, it basically forces the production facility to operate as a sell point in both single player and in multiplayer. So if you were, for example, in multiplayer, having to deliver product to a flour mill and you're player B, but the flour mill's owned by player A, typically you couldn't do that in single in multiplayer, but with the production revamp framework, if you're delivering to a flour mill that is modded to use the production framework, what will happen is the framework will recognize that while the production facility is owned by player A, player B has a contract to deliver product to the flour mill. So when player B delivers product to the flour mill, player B will get credit for delivering product to that contract. Player A will not get any credit. They will not get any product that's being delivered to the flour mill. If excess product is delivered, then player B will get money. If player A has a contract for flour or for wheat to be delivered to the flour mill and player A owns the flour mill, something else happens. The script will recognize that player A owns a flour mill and also has a contract to deliver wheat to a flour mill. So as you are delivering wheat, you will be giving credit to wards the mission but once you have completed the contract then any excess wheat you deliver will then go into your storage and then be able to be used for flour production so that is something else that this mod also adds and this mod has a really great google doc i suggest if you are a modder or you're looking to try to incorporate this production framework into a mod that you want to use, then I suggest you go take a look at his production revamp document. It's really good in explaining how to make use of his framework. Now let's move on to production revamp productions. And that is basically what we have all here is I've placed all of the demo productions that make use of the production revamp framework. So let's go into build mode. And we're going to go to production and all of the mods that are included in this demo of the framework have this nice little icon associated with it. We have three different biogas plants. We have a 99 kilowatt hour, 250 kilowatt hour and 500 kilowatt hour biogas plant. We then have an animal food production for $60,000. We have a fermenting tower for $45,000. We have a lime factory for $20,000. And then we have a production for seed and fertilizer for $50,000. We also have then three greenhouses. We have a small, medium, and large greenhouse, all that are three, five, and $10,000 respectively. And that is exactly what we see here. Now let's run through our production chains and see how this framework has significantly changed how these productions might work. So for our biogas plants, what we see here in the recipe is all biogas plants are going to require silage. They will not work unless you add silage. Once you add silage and activate the production line, you will start getting energy, methane, and digestate. You don't have to add anything else, just silage. The second line here represents bonuses. If I add slurry, I can get a 30% bonus to my output. Or, that's what these lines represent, or 
I could add manure and get 30% bonus. Or I could add sugar beet cut and get a 20% bonus. Or I could add any combination of these and combine the bonuses together. So I could add slurry and manure and get a 60% bonus to my production output. I could add all three, slurry, manure, and sugar beet cut, and get an 80% bonus to my overall biogas output. You'll see all three of these biogas plants have these parallel lines. That is representing that these production facilities run in parallel. Now, they only have one production line, so it really doesn't matter if they run in parallel or run in serial or in kind of split mode. But you can see they all require silage, and they all have a bonus for slurry or manure or sugar beet cut. Now, when we move down to the lime factory, the lime factory is going to require water. That is a mandatory item. And then it could be stone or straw. And the way this works is you supply water, you supply stone or straw, and then you're going to get lime. Now, you could add straw and stone, but it's only going to use one or the other. It's not going to use both. So we're going to add water, stone, and straw. And we want to activate. It's going to use stone and water to make lime. And then when the stone is gone, it will use the water and straw to make lime. And this is where it has added the ability to combine productions. So typically, base game, we would see a production line item for lime that required water and stone and to make lime. Then for this facility, we'd also see another production right below it that said water and straw, and it produced lime. Now with this, we've been able to compact it together into one production line, and we can make lime from adding water and stone or water and straw. I'm not gonna go into the chemistry items of how we get straw or lime out of straw and water. That might be something that can really happen. I don't know. We're just gonna move on to the next one because this is when it gets kind of complicated. So in our animal food production, we are once again in parallel. We can activate the pig food mixer and the TMR mixer at the same time, and we're gonna get the outputs as if we were doing pig food only or TMR only, it's not gonna matter because they're running parallel to each other. So for pig food, we can add potatoes or sugar beet cut or sugar beet. We can add sorghum or corn. We could add oats, wheat, or barley. And we could add canola, sunflowers, or soybeans. And then we're going to get our pig food. So we could add, let's say, potatoes, corn, wheat, and soybeans and get pig food. We could add sugar beets, sorghum, oats, and canola and get pig food. We could add potatoes, sorghum, barley, and sunflowers and get pig food. So this is required. One of these three are required. One of these two are required. One of these three are required, and one of these three are required, but we could literally have any combination of all of these as long as we have one of each row in order to ultimately get our pig food. For TMR, we have to supply either 500 liters of straw or, and sorry, let's go back. For TMR, we have to supply 500 liters of straw and 500 liters of silage. and Either, this is now either or, a thousand liters of grass or a thousand liters of hay. So we must supply straw, we must supply silage, we must supply grass or straw, sorry, grass or hay, and then we get our TMR. For under production, for seed production, we have to provide solid fertilizer, then we could provide either oats, barley, or wheat and we're going to get seed. If we supply oat, barley, and wheat, we're not going to get more seed. It's going to consume the oat first, then it's going to consume the barley, then it's going to consume the wheat, assuming we have enough fertilizer in order to go through all of those other inputs. As far as solid fertilizer goes, we have to supply manure, then we can either supply slurry or digestate, and we're going to get solid manure out of that. For our fermenting tower, 
we have to supply grass, chaff, and straw, and then we'll get silage. If we add silage additive, we will get a 5% bonus, but we don't have to add silage additive if we don't want to. We could just put grass, chaff, and straw in and get silage, but adding a little bit of additive is gonna give us a 5% bonus. Now, if we look at our greenhouses, these are now in split mode or shared mode. I like to call it cereal production, meaning that it can only produce tomatoes, lettuce, or strawberries at any one point in time. If we actually activate all three, we could do this. We could activate all three, but we're gonna be splitting time amongst all three of these. So it's gonna be making tomatoes for one turn, it's gonna be making lettuce for another turn, and it's gonna be making strawberries for another turn. So in theory, we're gonna get one third the ultimate output if we have all three activated than if we had three greenhouses with just one product activated at any one of those greenhouses. Now, the way this works is we can supply just water and we will get product. As you can see here, I only have water and we are spawning tomatoes. Or if we supplied seed, we could get 100% bonus, so we could double our output. If we supplied solid fertilizer, we could get 100% bonus, we could double our output. If we supply seed and fertilizer, guess what? We could double our double our bonus. We could get 200% output. If we supplied empty pallets, we get a 40% bonus. So we could ultimately, if we supplied water, seed, fertilizer, and empty pallets, we could have 240% output as opposed to simply supplying water alone. And then we have our recipes here for tomatoes, strawberries, and lettuce. Now, something else that this mod does is it allows us to set one extra kind of output mode. So we have right now spawning, which is the old game's version of storing. So spawning is the old version of storing. It will, at some point, spawn a pallet of tomatoes once I have enough tomatoes to spawn a pallet of them. Now, I could change this to selling. It's going to do exactly how we expect it to do. It is going to auto-sell, but this mod has basically taken care of a lot of the auto-sell penalty and the fact that you're going to get 90% of whatever the best price is listed at the time of selling. So that is different than how the base game auto selling process works. Then we could change it to distributing. It is going to distribute to the various other productions that are going to require tomatoes, for example. Or we have the new mode, which is storing. And in this case, storing is not spawning a pallet. Okay, so think of storing as the same as spawning except we're not spawning. Or think of it like storing is the same as the base game storing without the ability to spawn a pallet. So if I set this greenhouse to storing, and then if I fast forward time enough, we're going to see this basically produce enough tomatoes to where it should have spawned a pallet, but it's not going to actually spawn a pallet because we have set it to storing mode. And this is gonna be key with respect to our pallet limit now. Now with the 1.5 update, we have the ability on PC to have up to 300 pallets, but still, if we are running a big time production operation, we could set things to storing and not spawning, that way we don't get pallets, and then we won't have to worry about running into our pallet limit. And then when we are ready to, let's say, sell our tomatoes and we want to sell them manually, then we can change this to spawning and then it would spawn out our rows of tomatoes. We could pick those up and basically we could iterate through until we were done. Or we could go from storing straight to selling or storing straight to distributing. So guys, I hope that has helped you understand a little bit about the production revamp framework, as well as the production revamp productions mods 
They are used in conjunction with each other. Or should I say they can be used in conjunction with each other with the fact of production revamp productions. If you just add production revamp, don't expect to see anything different with respect to base game productions or other productions that have been released before the framework came out because it is set up to basically not change how other productions work unless the production has been set up to hook into the new production revamp framework. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below to this framework and the demo mods that are associated with this framework and how you might see it used in other mods. And until next time, happy farming.